Hello lovelies, this is Christina and welcome to my channel, My Intuitive Sense plus My Two Cents. So this video is going to be a little bit more of maybe my two cents, just kind of reviewing. There's going to be some intuitive part to it, um, probably because usually when I do anything like this, I'll start tapping into things. Um, I don't know. We'll have to see. But I felt compelled to do this video on the Menendez brothers in light of it being in the news again and uh, something new taking place, which to me is kind of ironic or funny or even maybe even planned um, that it's happening at this time that they're going to be uh, resentence and my intuitive sense is they're going to be released. Um, that's my feeling. Unless something goes sideways, I, I, I really feel that it's their time to be released, that their time has been served for the crime that took place. What hasn't been served? Well, then again, actually that's debatable. <laughs> Uh, they, I was going to say what hasn't been, you know, taken care of, but it really hasn't in another picture, uh, is the crime of the child abuse, the sexual abuse that took place in Eric Mendez's life. And then there was other type of abuse, of course, emotional and mental, uh, and I believe physical uh, for Lyle as well. He didn't learn until much, much later what was happening to his younger brother. Now, this is, you know, this case is very old, 35 years almost, I think, has gone by. I vaguely remember this. I think that they had two trials, I think, on the second one. I probably was when I was living in England, so I didn't have any access or I didn't tune into it. Um, I may have watched some of the first case uh, if I was back at that time in Canada. So, But I really don't remember it. You know, I don't know what my thoughts were back then. I don't know what my feeling was, my intuitive sense. I have no clue. I just, I do know they went to jail. I know they killed their parents. You know, that was horrific and um you know how could they get off of it the thing about it is that i don't really remember and it seems to be the consensus right now so i don't know if people were in a daze back then or it just somehow was whatever you know information that was out on the internet was there but people it was kind of like blurred over in a sense that or people's consciousness was just not there they were not tuning in to the crime crimes that took place in these these uh, boys lives um, that brought them to the tipping point of killing their parents that this doesn't happen there's 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 always an underlying reason you know it's taking them to a place of no return when you have exhausted yourself mentally emotionally physically spiritually you get to a point that you know you are out of your mind literally you are in generally will be in the emotion of deep rage pain and this is when you commit certain acts. I'm not going to get into all of that part. What I really want to get into is the fact that these two young boys at that time, now they're <laughs> older. Uh, they're only a few years younger than I am. And, you know, they've lived their life inside a prison. They have done really well in there. They have turned their life around um, in so many different ways, despite the situation. 
despite the environment that they live in, because that is a horrible environment as well. But that's what they did. They didn't fall apart. They didn't become more angry. They didn't become more of a criminal because you can still do that inside, you know. They didn't. They turned it around and they helped others. And this is why they're going to be getting a resentencing. And this is why, based on the law, etc., that they most likely will be free to live the rest of their life out here. And that's going to be an adjustment as well, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. It is. But I think that they have a good foundation because of how they've lived the last, you know, 30 plus years. I had to go and rewatch a lot of the videos for me before I would even do this because I wanted to tune in and, 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 you know, do my own. Actually, I did do intuitive kind of reading on them, uh, listening to them during the case, picking up on them, seeing if they were genuine, seeing if I could feel their pain, if I could, you know, and having had some, not a lot, but some sexual molestation, um, and, a little bit further in my younger life, you know, uh, I understood or I do understand where that can take you within yourself. I mean, of course, I've done my healing work. Uh, my focus has been on a spiritual path for most of my life, but I have, and I'm continuously doing my own healing work as well as helping others, but it's what you have to do. Do you know what I mean? But as a child, you don't have that sense very few do. And so that is what brings you to a point in your life that you either go down an even darker road or you go down a lighted path. So as I'm watching some of the trial and their testimony, the two of them, I found myself at some point as an empath as well, feeling their pain, crying as they started crying. So I knew within my being, this is genuine. They had an abusive father. They had a pedophile. They had a mother who, this is where I, this is probably a bit more intuitive on my part here. I don't have any proof of this and I haven't heard anything uh, talked about that out there, but just on the behavior of the mother, I feel like she may have been also bipolar and she may have also uh, come from a, an abusive uh, family childhood, maybe not the same, but she seemed to on some levels accept it. So there's something in her psyche here that yes, it's wrong, but now it's okay. You know, so she is, she is probably a whole case in herself. And then the father obviously came from an abusive family. Uh, maybe his parents or one of his parents or someone in his family was also a pedophile and being that they described him as being a brutal man he has come from some brutality in his life as well to repeat it because then it becomes like generational and you know until somewhere it stops and hopefully with these you know Eric and Lyle that that is not something that is still hidden within them so There is a reason that they went to this point to kill their parents. Now, they also said that they thought that they were going to be, they were going to die that night. So there's a whole bunch of things going on here, a whole bunch of things going on here that took them to this state of fear of their own life. So what do you do? And it may not be exactly, or it may not have been taking place that right away they saw the father you know, with a gun or the mother or someone doing that. So they were just instantly defending themselves. They had felt through a, an argument, through the conversations that were going on that day, that something bad was going to happen to them and they needed to defend themselves. And that's where it went. But it is interesting that this is coming up at the same time when you have this big, big case out there with Diddy. Um that has to do with 
it really, really, really has to do, which not a lot of people are really talking about. Um, it has to do with not just drugs, partying, uh, orgies. Um, it has to do with pedophilia and satanic ritual, because this is what was happening at those parties. Eric and Lyle's father worked in that industry. He worked with Clive Davis. Who's Clive Davis? Diddy's mentor. Probably taught him a lot of things, showed him how to deal with the business. This is how it works in the business. There is connections here. So there's a theme. It means that these things are all, there's a tapestry that's woven there. You know, there's a thread that's playing out right now. So it's almost like they're saying, okay, you know, there may be distraction here at the same time. Pay attention over here to the Mendendez brothers, and but don't pay attention too much with Diddy. But how can you? Because we have the internet and it's all out there. But there's a theme there. And what I feel like it is about, and maybe, I don't know, this is my intuitive sense and maybe my two cents, that the theme that's happening here is that we need to talk about the children. People who, children who have been severely traumatized by sexual abuse, SRA, etc. Everyone's different. Everyone has a different psyche. Everybody has a different constitution. But many become fragmented. You have altars that take over. Many of them, you know, some of them just commit suicide. Some of them become very, very traumatized people. Some of them, yes, become, go on their own you know, sprees of damage in the world. Um, so it's going to affect everybody, but it starts in childhood. That's where it starts. And this is the focus. I just did a video um, the other day with Ali Carter, who is a survivor of sex trafficking and SRA, um, who also was at Diddy parties um, and so much more, you know, and there's, she's not the only one. There's Thousands and thousands and thousands, but it's the children. So these boys had this type of life. They were not trafficked, but then again, I don't really know. Lyle doesn't seem to be because he seemed to be the protege, um, you know, into sports. I believe it was tennis and, you know, to go on to that professionally, etc. And then Eric was there and he was the one that was being molested and, and abused and, 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 and brought up quite different than, than Lyle, even though Lyle experienced, according to him, you know, his mother and father's verbal abuse and treatment of them. And you know what I mean? Putting them down, berating them, things like this that existed. But Lyle and Menendez were, were in a family situation that formed them. You were formed in your childhood. You are a product of your environment. And yes, as you get older, it is really up to you to hopefully to see, hey, no, this was, <laughs> this was not, this is not correct. This is not the right way to, to live. This is, this is not beneficial to my life or my health and my spirit in any way. So this is when you take charge. Now, I'm not going to get too metaphysical here. I, I could, though, you know, but I'm not at the moment. I'm just going to say that this is what brought them to that point. This is what's brought a lot of other people who have been sexually abused um, as children. We need to talk about this more, not just the adults who are generally the predators. And yes, they were probably victims themselves. You know, or they probably were abused themselves. But they grew up and they continued it. They didn't stop it in any way. They did not take self-responsibility. It's harder for the children to do that. The adults need to do that. So I think the theme here is that we need to talk about the children. We need to talk about, uh, <laughs> well, the ones that are missing why don't people talk about this? Where are they? Yes, some of them have been found. 
unfortunately, for the tragic end, but many of them are never found again. And they're not all dead. They're not. They are somewhere else in a different type of life against their will. And many participated in this. Not just celebrities, not just politicians. Everyday people participate in this. In your schools. CPS is a big perpetrator of this. It's a very deep rabbit hole. It's a very deep, dark rabbit hole. And I do believe intuitively as well that this is changing, that this is what's unfolding, and that this momentum has to continue. But everything that you see happening out there has a connection. Yes, it can get distorted because there's so many people out there, especially with the internet. But just come back to the root, the root of what's really happening. So with the Menendez brothers, I really hope that they are set free. And I hope that they have come to a place within themselves with their own inner healing and progress that they can adjust. It'll take a while to the outside life because you know what? That is a prison in a lot of ways, too, for a lot of people. You have your own inner prism. So hopefully that they have come to a place that they'll be able to adjust to the outside world. And I do hope that they are set free in this way. They did commit a crime. They did time. Their parents, his father, he didn't do any time. In the end, it was even more harsh because his life was taken and you know I don't believe in an eye for an eye I believe in karma I trust that you know what you have put out there you will have to in some way uh, experience yourself so who knows now that's getting very metaphysical or esoteric but it is it is what happens in the cycles of reincarnation but coming back to the present, I feel these young boys were not heard at that time, and it may be that the collective consciousness just did not see it. Sure, there were some people who did, um, but they didn't see it. And then, and then there's the media who, you know, control a lot of what they want out there, what they don't want out there, because it's constantly programming us. It's up to you to tune in and to say, hey, no, 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 no. Discern, discern what feels right and what does not. So now things are very different than they were 35 years ago. So I do believe in an orchestration and a timing of things and that this is unfolding just as it should be. Um, but don't think there isn't a link between what's going on right now out in the world. There really is. So that's all I really want to say about that. Um, and I wish them the best. And I hope that their life is, um, you know, more joyful and fruitful and happy uh, if they get out. Um, and that we, humanity, collectively take our focus to some degree, you know, and say, wait a minute, where are the children? What happened to them? What's going on here? Where are they? So that we can stop this cycle that just keeps being perpetuated. There's no reason that we should abuse each other. If people understood the oneness of life, you would know that when you harm another, you harm yourself on some level. We need to recognize that. We need to heal. And we need to unite. So with that, I say thank you for tuning in. I hope you like this. Like, subscribe, share. If you have any comments, any questions, or if you have any um, 
people or circumstances or events that you would like me to do an intuitive reading on plus my two cents. I'm not saying that I will do everything. I really have to discern myself and I have to feel it, tune into it. And if I, you know, start to receive something, um, then I'll do a video. So put that in the comments. Thank you all and many blessings to everyone.